Hi, this is Robert with Pioneer Smokehouses, and today we're going to be doing something a little unique. We're doing hamburger pizza. I, I never thought about this before, but I saw it in a Facebook group, and so I gave it a try, and hey, it's great, especially if you're on like a keto diet or something like that. I'm not specializing in a keto channel, but if I can throw something in there once in a while that'll meet those criteria, I'm more than happy to do it. So let's go ahead and start the smoker. I've already turned on the propane tank. And there it goes. You can hear it come right on. And this is something that we're going to want to cook at a little bit higher temperature and to get it heated up as quick as possible, we're going to turn this on on a higher temperature. I have the cast iron pan here for the wood chips and that will go in the bottom door here of our master built MPS 230. We're going to load this chip after we put in the pizza crust because we're kind of not worried about hitting it really heavy, but we want to get that smoke. So what we're going to use for wood chips is we're going to use hickory. I would use for a pizza crust, a hickory or a mesquite just about any time. And since we are using the hamburger, we want to even add a little bit more flavor. I'm going to set a block of wood in the middle just for extra flavor. And then I'll take some of the Smokehouse product wood chips. Smokehouse product wood chips are a little bit on the fine side. You can see there. They're designed more for an electric smoker than a propane smoker, but they'll work just fine and they'll catch on really good. Just kind of center it out and make sure that you don't put the chips too much to the edge or you'll just waste them because they won't burn completely around the edge. We'll set this aside until later. So we need to let this heat up, which will take probably about 10 minutes. Then why it's heating up, what we're going to do is we're going to head inside and we're going to make the hamburger pizza crust. Let's get our hamburger pizza crust ready. So first of all, I like to start with a lean hamburger. This is 93.7, um, 96.4 works really good. I, I really tend to avoid the fattier hamburgers. They uh, really don't serve me much purpose. The only time I would do something like that is if I were making uh, meatballs because they'll stay together a little bit easier or maybe even a meatloaf. But in general, you'll just get a lot of reduction and whatever you add will just be kind of a waste of time. <clears throat> so first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a large bowl and we're just going to put an egg in it. I just want to check the egg, make sure it's good, break it up a little bit. Good to go. And then we're not going to dump the hamburger in. We're going to pull it apart. I don't know if you've seen this in my other videos, but pulling apart the hamburger will make it easier to mix. And that's why I try to avoid buying the hamburger tubes as much as possible because those are really pressed in there really tight. This package of hamburger is a pound and a half. And it's not perfect, but it's broken up pretty good. The next thing that we're going to do is we want to add some Italian seasoning to this. Now, I laid out some of the flavors here that you would have in your regular Italian seasoning over here. And I'll just read them to you rather than doing a close-up. But we've got basil... Uh, rosemary, garlic, thyme, oregano, 
and uh, even parsley if you want. I have two different bottles of mix that I use. One is just a generic Italian seasoning mix from uh, Kroger. And I like to use this when I'm just kicking around and making some basic uh, spaghetti sauce. I just add it to canned spaghetti sauce because the canned spaghetti sauce, or especially the jar stuff, is usually pretty good. And so I could sit and make spaghetti sauce for hours, or I could just add some garlic and some of this to it and be good. Uh, the other one that I like to use when I'm doing something a little more special is the Spice Hunters Italian seasoning. And for this recipe, we're going to use this and uh, then we'll add garlic to it. So I'm going to put in about a tablespoon and a half. And to get some kind of idea, if you're using regular spices, I'd be using a half a tablespoon thyme, a half a tablespoon basil, and a half a tablespoon of oregano, and then dialing in any of the other stuff like the rosemary and whatnot. Then what we'll be doing is we'll be adding a half a tablespoon of garlic, or a little more than half a tablespoon. You can't really have too much garlic. And then what we have is a uh, seasoned dry burger mix. The one thing that we're gonna need is a teaspoon and a half, a half a tablespoon again, of cornstarch. That's your binder. That'll bring everything together. Um, I don't think that you can really go much over on that if you go a little bit, but I wouldn't go under or you won't get the effect that you want. And then you'll go ahead and just give that a little mix. You could put a little, uh, uh, pos or excuse me, you could put a little bit of tomato paste in there, but we're not really going for that. We don't want the hamburger to be the star of the show. We want the hamburger to be the pizza dough, and we want the, uh, the topping to come across on that. We're gonna do something really interesting for spaghetti sauce or pizza sauce because we don't wanna open a whole can of pizza sauce just for one little pizza. I'm gonna mix this for another minute and not any longer, so we'll take a real quick break. So we've got it all together, and this follows the same rules as a meatloaf, not the rules of a jerky. You do not wanna overmix this or it will get tough. And on jerky, we want it to get tough, but on meatloaf or meatballs or this recipe for hamburger pizza crust, we don't want this to be tough. We want it to be nice and soft and edible. The next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take one of these parchment pop-outs. They're, you know, pre-cut. Set it in the pan and you're gonna see that it's not gonna fill up my pizza pan completely, but it's pretty close. If you want it to fill the pan completely, you would have to use a regular sheet or you don't even have to use a pizza pan, by the way, for this. You could use a regular plate and form your pizza in that. And then I'm gonna flatten this out. So we'll take another break while I do that. Okay, you can see that I have this flattened out. And uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a little ridge. So first thing I'll do is I'll just take my fingers and push it around the edges like this. And that's just gonna give it a little uh, edge to keep all the toppings on like the sauce. And then once I've done that, then I'll kind of push down the middle. Doesn't have to be perfect and actually the ridges will help keep your sauce in place. So if it's not perfectly flat, you spread your sauce on there and you'll be okay. And then if you want to, just curve up the edges just a little bit. Kind of like that. And now we have a hamburger pizza crust. I'm gonna go ahead 
And now that I'm done with this, I'm gonna just set this aside for a minute. We need to have a pizza sauce, but we don't wanna open a whole can for one pizza. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some ketchup. I'm gonna take this ketchup and I'm gonna pour a half a cup of it in a mixing cup. The reason we're doing this right now is because we wanna give a chance for the seasonings to hydrate. So I don't know if you can see that, that's about a half a cup there. And then we're gonna take our Italian mix and we're gonna put in about a tablespoon Feel free to measure that if you need to. And garlic, we're gonna go pretty heavy on the garlic. About a tablespoon also. And then this one is the red crushed pepper. If you're worried about getting large pieces, you can grind it up a little bit, but I just want a little bit in for flavor. And I prefer it cooked rather than sprinkled on top. But in a party, you get what you get and you just got to be happy with it. So I'm just going to mix this and place it to the side and I'll set it in the refrigerator and let it rest. So that way all these spices can hydrate while the pizza crust is cooking. So we're just waiting for the smoker to finish heating up and then we'll be ready to go in. It only took a few minutes to make that hamburger pizza crust and the temperature of the smoker is almost where we want it. The one thing that when I made the crust that I didn't do was I didn't trim the parchment paper. Now in some smokers you won't need to trim the parchment paper because you have plenty of room for instance in the 40 inch but with this one it will hang up or push on the sides and we want to avoid that so I'm just going to follow the edge of the pizza pan for a nice easy cut. Now, if you want to, you could put the pizza pan in there, but I'm not going to, and the reason is, is that I don't want to take the chance of any grease pooling up. I would rather the grease fell down on my foil tray below, so that way it's not part of my hamburger crust. And once it does that, then I'll be have a nice dry crust that doesn't have a lot of fat on it. Also, since we're running such a lean hamburger, there shouldn't be too much of it anyway. Okay, I'll go ahead and open this up. I'm gonna put it on my normal spot. Just like that, right off of the tray. And then I'm gonna push this down just a little bit. And remember, if you're not sure, the best thing that you could do is take a knife and poke little holes around the edges to give it a chance. I do this with salmon. There we go, that'll help it drain. We'll go ahead and close this. Bye. Now that the smoker is almost up to temperature, I don't want to take the chance of burning my ham when I put it in there. So I'm going to put on these gloves here, and these are just Weber hot gloves. My favorite thing about them is that they come all the way up my arm. So that way, if I'm reaching into a hot oven or into a grill or smoker, then I have some protection right here. I've loaded the hamburger pizza crust into the smoker and we're gonna let it cook for about a half an hour without looking. I'm gonna sit here for the next 10 to 15 minutes and make sure that it comes up to the 300 degrees that I was looking for and go from there. There's a little bit more room to go up a little bit. I find that the top temperature in this smoker has been right in the 350 range. So it's hard to get it much past that. For you, we'll be back in a couple of seconds. For me, 
we'll be back in about 30 minutes. It's been a half an hour and we are at the halfway point. So we're gonna turn this hamburger pizza crust out. What we don't wanna do is we don't wanna drop it on the ground. So we're gonna use this plate to help us. This is our serving pizza serving plate. So I'm just gonna put that on there. And just because this is hotter than I thought it was, I'll go ahead and put this glove on. And let's pull this whole shelf right on out and just flip the whole thing over just like that. Boom, look at that. And voila, I'm gonna set this to the side for a minute. Then I'm gonna put this, our grill mat on there, and then I'll use just the gloved hand, come back and straight back in there. If you wanna temperature check it, what we're going for is 160 degrees. With burger, I wanna be around 160 or so, so I feel comfortable to eat it. But because we're adding spaghetti sauce on top, we don't mind going a little over because we'll be adding a little bit of moisture back into it. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna continue to smoke this for another half an hour at the same temperature. I'm just gonna add a little bit more wood chips and we're gonna move right along. We are ready to move to the next step. Let's go ahead and open it up and take a look. I want you to check that out really quick. And there's just a little bit of a dimples around there, so it's not a lot. And I'm going to um, make an effort to drain this just a little bit. If you're at all uncomfortable with just tipping the thing sideways, then use another plate, flip it over, let it sit for a second, and then transfer it back. So that's a little bit better. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move my table over here so you can see it. Okay, let's go ahead and add the sauce. That looks like plenty. Then we're gonna add half of the cheese. It's about three quarters of a cup, maybe just a little over. Okay, then we're gonna add some bacon. You use bacon, pepperoni, whatever you want. I add a little garlic to this bacon and lightly toasted it in the oven. And we're gonna add mushrooms. Probably got about twice what we need here. I think my little hamburger pizza here could have been a little thinner. Well, the rest of these look like my snack. Add a few olives. And we're gonna add some more cheese here. Put 
putting the rest of the cheese on before I put a few olives on will help it hold together a little bit better. After I get it all on here, I just like to smash it down just a little bit. And then Parmesan cheese. Perfect. Now we're going to go ahead and return this back to the uh, smoker. I'm going to center this just a little bit better and pick off a little bit of the cheese around the edges. I don't want a big gooey mess here. And then we'll just go ahead and reload it in there. We're shooting for about a half an hour. The temperature is only right around 375, just a little under 375. So like I said, the top consistent temperature is just above 350 on this smoker. And uh, if you get much higher than that, you'll end up just burning the wood chips. And we, we don't want the wood chips to ignite. We want to get good smoke. We'll be back in 30 more minutes. I took a sneak peek in there and it looks like we're done. So I'm going to grab this. Pull that out and let it sit for a second. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and turn this off. Just as a matter for me, I like to turn off the propane tank. I don't know if it's really necessary, but I pretty much always do it. I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it off of the grill mat because I don't want to take a chance of cutting that. Sample of that crispy cheese. Mmm, yummy. So I'll set this to the side for now. Got myself my Victorinox knife here. I just love these knives. And uh, if you watch any of my videos, you see that I use them on a regular basis. I'm gonna bring this up to the camera because I want you to be able to see the smoke ring in the hamburger here. So let's go ahead and cut a slice. I'm going to cut a small piece here that I can uh, handle. So first thing, nice, very edible, still quite hot. If I can pick it up, I can hold it and wow. That's good. I know you're sitting there and everything I tell you that I cook is good. Well, so the chicken wings were a little salty. That's because I put too much salt on them. And, you know, ribs are good. No problem, right? And jerky's good. But this is awesome. This is up there with the um, chuck roast or the brisket. Wow. So if I'm going to recommend you make something at home that only takes like a few ingredients, this is it. Yeah, I'm kind of a mess here now. That's it. They're done. It's time for my lunch. A low carb hamburger pizza, hamburger pizza dough. You could put anything on it that you like and end up with a great low carb pizza. Now remember, 
If you're on a low carb diet that's really particular, be careful with how much tomato sauce you put on it. And also be careful with the uh, cornstarch. And shredded cheese in a bag usually has cornstarch in it to keep it from sticking. So you wanna be careful with that. Number one accessory in the world, grill mats. These things are awesome. So if you've seen anything in the video that you like, including the Masterbuilt Propane uh, MPS 230, the links are below. You'll also find a few articles and uh, we'll do some articles to some pizza or some links like that. I don't have this one on the website yet, but we'll try to get it up there before this video publishes. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.